should overload. So it fills up the hopper, so you can see the hopper getting filled. So if you're not familiar with this DLC, it's part of the season pass, but you can buy it individually. And it'll smash out bales very quickly, so there's one gone in already. Hey guys, welcome back to AF Farms for another episode of Earl and Grat. So let's have a bit of a recap. So basically it's been a few, it's been a few weeks since I've uh, jumped on this map, but I've made a few changes already. So we were working towards building up our TMR supply for the dairy cows. So currently I've got a giant hay pile over here that I was stockpiling. And I've got a giant straw pile that I was stockpiling and silage, obviously for TMR purposes to feed the cows. So what I've decided to do is i am implemented the Gavile, I think it's called, Gavile, Gavile, um, automated baler, and the bale and pallet storage mod. So let's go over and have a closer look. To store, pr first of all, it's gonna be the straw bales, and then we're gonna do the hay second. And then we're gonna empty out this silage bunker, turn that into silage bales, and we are gonna go from there. So Basically the reason for this is just to consolidate the storage of the hay, straw and silage into the bale format, which is going to be a lot easier for our feeding truck, okay? Because obviously this milling machine, I've been having issues trying to empty out the bunker as it currently is, the silage bunker that is. So I feel like just throwing the bales in the top, mixing it up, feeding the cows that way is going to be uh, sort of far easier in the short term. We nearly maxed out on slurry uh, and the cows have been suffering from really low productivity and really they got no food at the moment so what i'm also going to do is probably transition towards feeding them primarily just hay because um, they'll get 80 percent productivity out of that um, i'll still keep the grass fields so obviously field 18 was wheat because we were using that to get straw for the tmr but it's kind of pointless because we can make mixed tmr with silage and hay anyway so the straw is just um, there for filler um yeah so we've got we're going to combine fields 18, 19, and 20 into one big grass field. And we're going to start stockpiling grass. So we're probably going to still accommodate silage in silage bunkers, but we're going to change the bunker style. So I'll get rid of this drive-through one and go for a more traditional one with, one with a back on it. So probably looking at, if I'm honest, probably this, this type here. The bunker silo medium. So we'll find a position for that and we'll make it work. I've employed some solar panels in this area. So I've put in one, two, three, four, five. I put a, took out a $500,000 loan for those, moved the farmhouse, um, and we're gonna kind of fill this area up with some solar panels. So I've, I think I've talked about that previously, but that's gonna give us a uh, monthly cash flow regardless of what we do in terms of sleeping through days, etc. cetera. Um, and then the wider farm. So we're gonna look to purchase fields 21, 22, 14, 15, 16, 17, basically all, this, all these fields in this section here. Then we're going to go large on um, grain farming, sugar beets, everything basically the map has to offer. So we're going to be kind of guided by the production points on the map, sell points, that sort of thing. But we're going to go more European style, so European equipment. Um, and then Elm Creek is going to be more American equipment, American focused. But we're just going to go from there and see what happens. So, all right, let's get cracking with some bailing. So I'll jump into this guy. Now this, this machine... I've set it up in such a way that when I'm, when I'm bailing, so I've got automatic engine start turned off, so this will run if I'm out of a tractor. So you can see that, hopefully we can kind of hear it. It's got a kicker on this section, so you can get this Gavile baler with a kicker on the end. And what that does is it kicks it off to um, my right, and then it'll drop it straight into the bale and pallet storage mod. So if you're not familiar with this, it's a base game free um, building, which stores pallets and bales. So it's perfect for our purposes here. And because we've got these large stockpiles of loose material, it's absolutely perfect for what we we're trying to do. So obviously, I was going to, I was going um, with one strategy, trying to handle the loose material. But I think having the bales conveniently stored in a small location is going to be far more beneficial, and I won't have to devote having this material loosely on the ground either. So what we're going to do is we're going to smash through these piles and get them removed. And it also frees up more space for our mowers to do, do their thing. Okay, so what we're going to do is we'll drop this off. Now basically this, this baler actually works quite quickly. So once we back up here, we get the overloading trigger. That should overload. So it fills up the hopper, so you can see the hopper getting filled. So if you're not familiar with this DLC, it's part of the season pass, but you can buy it individually. And it'll smash out bales very quickly so there's one gone in already 
we go over to the little UI menu, you can see it mixing the bale right now. As you can see I've made 11. So I think it tracks lifetime bales made and session bales. So you can reset it. I mean, I don't know why you'd want to reset it. But a pretty cool feature. And you can see our bales getting stored in the back there. So perfect machine for this purpose actually. Like I'm really glad that it's um, available because it's really going to help out for my purposes. So now the only, I wonder if there's a way to automatically overload this stuff. I don't think there is because if I jump out of here, this tractor should still be running. Sounds like it is. I'll just double check that automatic engine start is still uh, turned on. So where are we? Whether or not the vehicle's engines are started or stopped automatically. Let's try to turn that off. Uh, start engine, start overloading. Now what should happen now is that should, every time there's a bale made, so let's see if that opens on this next bale. So the bale is, so we're at 20,000 in the hopper. Is this gonna open? I think there is a way to do it, but yes, yeah, so that tractor's definitely running. That hopper's, there we go. So yeah, if you want it to automatically fill, automatic engine starts the way to go. Perfect. So we're smashing these bales out like no tomorrow. This is excellent. All right, let's go get another load of straw. So yeah, we're gonna be doing the straw first, hay second, and we'll go from there. So I haven't even turned this on, have I? Let's try that again. So this will make short work of this pile. So this is the leased loading wagon, I think. So I've also had a bit of a clean out of what I was leasing versus what I had owned and purchased. So I've consolidated a few things, sold a few things off just in preparation for sort of making life a little bit easier for myself. Now if I had a, if I had a third tractor, what I'd be doing right now is cutting some grass. So we'll have a look at the used vehicles in a second, because there was a tractor, oh, this, is the, this is my fear, getting stuck on these piles. Okay, so that's made pretty short work of that pile. Let's turn crab steering back on, not crab steering, all wheel steering. It does make it a little bit harder to turn. So now that I've got my baling process somewhat automated, what I'm thinking too is I'm going to employ forage wagons and mowers rather than using workers. So then that removes the need for wind rowing uh, and then manually baling myself. So I can basically just come over, dump a load into the automatic baling machine, the Gavile, Gavil, and then go from there. So this is some of the worst driving I've ever seen. It's a little bit hard to wrangle this uh, trailer at times. Let's see if we can't get these last little straggly bits. Okay, I think there was some just over here, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe that's all of it, close to all of it anyway. All right, let's get this dropped off. Now, I may also look to turn seasons back on as well, once we get a little bit more established, just to sort of break up the routine a little bit. Okay, straw's going in. I love that animation on the left though, that's awesome. So we're already up to 20 bales, so obviously I did a few practice runs off camera just to make sure this is all set up correctly. Now I think if you don't have the kicker here, basically that'll just store, store the bales in preparation manually, for them to be manually moved, so the bale won't come out unless the path is clear. And this bale only does 125 centimeter bales. The larger machine will do up to, I believe, 150. I think if I just keep them all 125 centimetres, it'll make the TMR, TMR recipe nice and easy because it'll be like two parts, two parts hay, two parts silage, one part straw, and that should give us perfect TMR mix for our mixer. Cool, 10,000 litres. So this should be uh, empty. No, unless the hopper's full. No, not quite. Cool. All right, we're empty. Let's go grab some hay. Actually, before we do that, let's check if we've got any tractors for sale. No, we don't. All right, what I want to do is I'm going to go and sleep. See if we can't drag a, another tractor in the used vehicle sales. We'll let those bales do their thing. I mean, I should probably drop some hay off into the cows. So I'll do that next next time as well. Just to give them something to eat. So you can see 7,000 in leasing costs. Loan interest is 1,300. And then we've got 13,000 in property income. So that's what's, that's what's carrying the farm at the moment. Oh, here we go. A couple of good options. Potentially, what do we got here? 1000 Vario, that'd be perfect, but it's a bit out of our price range. T-Series Vultra, quite nice. Um, yeah, the issue here is our loan is 500,000, so it's maxed out currently. But we can get the Vultra T-Series, so I reckon we'll go for that. Um, what are we gonna go? I think we might just go standard 210 horsepower, or do we spring for the 270? So what do we got? 
230. What's the highest horsepower on this? 30 grand. I think that's oh, it's going to clean out our money. So we might have to go the yeah, we might just have to go the 94 grand. I mean, we could just lease one until we get on got to get on our feet a little bit better. I think that might be a more sensible thing to do actually. So let's go and lent, lease a small tractor. So we'll go the ooh, what are we going to go? Kubota. So these these are all the D DLC tractors. I think what I'll go is probably the Veltra. I do like the class though. How much is this? 30 grand for the 205, 110 for 45. Yeah, let's just get a stocko class. So this is just going to be for mowing at the moment because we can't afford the forage wagon just yet. So let's lease that. Okay, where are we? Yeah, I think, I think we need to just get our cash up just that little bit further and then we can go from there. So let's go and hook this mower up. Now, if you've been following along with the series, I had a few fails with the silage bunker and this little concrete pad was to try and salvage some of the silage, but I am um, having the solar panels. So is this going to connect? Hopefully it will. All right, I don't know what's going on here. Let's try this again. Cool. Yeah, it's just going to make life just that little bit easier. And once this is a full, full size grass field, we're going to have heaps of grass silage. It's not going to be an issue. Okay, leave that guy to do his thing. Okay, this guy is hopefully empty. Now I wonder if I can eject this bale. So, because we're out of straw, um, what can we do? I might have to jump into my tractor here. Okay, turn off baler. Can we eject the bale? Doesn't look like it. Alright, so let's turn the baler on anyway. Um, anyway, let's go and grab. I've got, a, I've got a suspicion here that what will probably happen is it'll override what's in there. So what I am going to do is I'm going to take a load of this straw, not this straw, this um, hay into cow barn straight up. So I didn't realise I had so much hay here. I mean it makes sense because we've been cutting so much grass. My little strategy is just to drive around the edges, pick it up bit by bit. You know this first load may just end up getting chucked in the back of the the wagon here so it's uh, autumn at the moment so it's a little bit dark Let's see if we can't speed up time a fraction all right how do we go with this hay so i'm pretty sure this will move over it now hay bale all right it's pumped out a straw bale so this is obviously going to be a partial straw bale and if we check in our little menu here i don't know is it clustered as 20? It's clustered as 5,000 litres. Okay, there you go. Alright, here we go. First hay bale. Excellent. Okay, let's um, put some brakes on that time lapse. Cool, so we've got a bit of daylight. Good to know. Okay, let's grab this guy. Fill up with some hay. Get these cows fed, at least. I should just be able to drive in here and pick this up. So I don't know why it has so much issue getting out of the bunker. I don't quite understand. I think it's because you need to do this motion, the up and down. Obviously because you're cutting away the silage. It just becomes a little bit annoying when you've got stuff on the ground you want to pick up. I mean here is not too bad. Okay, cool. Happy with that. Right, let's get these guys fed. Obviously I've got this coming out the wrong side but it's still going in. Okay, cool, we're almost maxed out, maxed out on the milk too. Alright, why is this guy not working? Okay, let's try that again. Alright, let's grab another run of hay. Yeah, I didn't think I'd like the Gavir, Gavir, I'm going to call it the Gavir baler pack, but I mean, it, just that, just that ability to bail automatically from loose material, it's excellent. Hopefully it's not going to take too many loads to get this get this up. Okay, I wonder if there's like a bales, bales per minute counter. Cool, alright. How many, how many bales are we up to? I find this fascinating. 35. Cool, man. Happy days. Look at that, I love how it neat, neatly stacks them too. The OCD in me is loving that. So 250 bales and pallets, so we're going to have plenty of room in there, which is going to be quite good. Alright, what else can we do? Let's have a quick look. 
keep that overloading. Uh, might do another run of hay into here actually, so obviously while we've got a bit of time I'm not going to bother with the silage for the moment. That's why I've got the telehandler and the long bucket for that purpose. I just want to get this moved. Either fed, either fed to the cows or stored away. So I want to start getting I want to start getting some cash flow. The main, the main way the cash is going to come in is through the renewables, so that'll help fund everything else. Then once we can expand um, our land, and if I'm going to go long term with the cows, I'm going to get a bigger mixing wagon, that's for sure. I think this is the smaller, smaller of the self-propelled. Still very good, but just... In the interest of efficiency. Alright, can we unload or what? what's going on? So I think we're doing 5,000 litre hay bales here, if I'm not, mistake, not mistaken. Four thousand five hundred, okay. So we'll definitely look to purchase one of these when we get the funds up. This might allow us to go and get another run here, hopefully. Yeah, either way, I'll go and grab it. Right, let's grab another run of hay. Yes, yeah, so I'm looking, for, looking forward to getting fields 21 and 22, and getting the rest of these fields joined up. I think that's going to be pretty. Uh, it's going to be pretty good. It's really going to facilitate some sort of massive farming. Got a pretty nice European map. So this is obviously a Giants map. Base game. I usually play base game maps exclusively. Except for No Man's Land and occasional court farms and stuff like that. Just my preference. Because they're pretty, generally speaking, they're pretty reliable in terms of not having to start over. Due to map updates and new save games and stuff so I really really like to keep my progress and have confidence that whatever I do on a farm is gonna stay there all right I reckon let's go grab another run here and these guys will be pretty well topped up I think underway let's go just sort of hoover up these corners a little bit I mean, when this thing works, it works really well. I just found in the silage bunker it was a little bit temperamental. Okay, that should be pretty close to being full. And yeah, we're probably due for another run of hay into the, the baler. So let's get that get that happening. Oh, what is going on here? This worker is obviously having a rough one. So I find sometimes these workers don't recognise the fields very well. It's very annoying. Okay, how are we travelling here? 20,000 in the hopper, 4,000 in the bale. How many are we up to now? So we're up to 48. So we've done 50, nearly 50 bales since we've started this episode. Wow, that's awesome. Alrighty, so what we'll do is I'll cut this video here. We'll come back in, we'll continue our bailing operation. 
just admire this drop and feed in. This has obviously got the silage wrapper on there as well, so when it comes time to doing grass, we'll get silage bales pretty much straight up. And we'll go from there. So thanks very much for watching, guys. Really appreciate it, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.